In today's episode, we're going to talk about a special type of three-phase transformer, which is called the zigzag transformer. So in a typical distribution system, you're going to have some kind of high voltage three-phase power line coming into a street, uh, and then it goes into a transformer, and the transformer transforms that down to a low voltage, and that low voltage is then distributed to all the houses in that street. Now what I've drawn here on this piece of paper, or <laughs> drawn, uh, printed out here on this piece of paper, is the low voltage side, the output, uh, of that transformer. So this is also known as a secondary. So in this particular transformer, the secondary side uh, is using a star connection. So what this means is that we've got three coils, one for each phase, and these coils are connected to one central point which we connect to the ground, and that's also a neutral wire. And so at the output of this transformer we have three phases, R, S and T, and a neutral wire. And these then go to the customer's houses. Now what we can do is we can draw the voltages on each one of these phases as a vector, which is basically an arrow, right? And an arrow has two properties. First of all, its length, and also its angle. So this one we're going to draw as an, uh, as an arrow it looks like this, right? So that's going to be R. Now the length of that arrow is the, the, the magnitude of the voltage, which is going to be, you know, assuming that you live in Europe, it's going to be 230 to 240 volts. Right, that's going to be your voltage on one of these phases. So that's basically just the voltage that you get on a, on a normal power outlet, right? Now S is also going to be 240 volts, but it's going to be at a different angle, right? Because it's a different phase. So it's going to be 120 degrees off. So it also has the same length, right? 240 volts, but this angle is 120 degrees. And then the same story for T, but that's going to be, let's see if I can get the length kind of right, that's going to be another 120 degrees. And those are your three phases represented as uh, vectors. But then of course, you know, there is also a voltage between these phases, right? Not just between the phases and neutral, because that's 240, but there is also a voltage between, let's say, R and S, or S and T, or T and R. And that voltage is quite a bit higher. So for instance, if I want to know the voltage between R and S, that is the difference between R and S. So that's R minus S, right? But R minus S is the same as R plus minus S. It's a bit silly, right? But that's the same as that. So what I can do is I can, first of all, I can calculate minus S. Now minus S is just S, except, you know, it's in this direction. That's minus S, right? Minus S, right there. And now I add up this one to R, and then I get that, right? If I do this, I get that. So I add these vectors up, you know, adding vectors, you might remember how that goes from, uh, from secondary school, right? You add them up like this, and you get a bigger vector. Right? And that vector is a length of 415, 415 volts. So that is your phase to phase voltage, also known as a line voltage. And the same thing goes for the difference between R and T and T and S. So that's why on one of these big red, you know, three phase power plugs, it says, you know, 240 slash 415 volts, or, you know, perhaps 230 slash uh, 400, or 220 slash uh, 380, if it's a bit of an older older thing, but you know, comes down to the same thing. Right, so that's our, you know, normal star connection at the output of the transformer. Let's move on to the zigzag now, so things are going to get a little bit more complicated. Right, <laughs> a little bit more complicated and it looks like an absolute mess, that's right, but I promise it's not going to be that difficult. 
So what we can see about this zigzag connection is that first of all, we've got more coils, right? We've got six coils instead of three. But we can also see that these coils are a bit smaller, right? So they're not the same size. They don't have the same amount of turns. They're smaller coils, but there is more of them. What we can also notice is that they're connected to each other in kind of a strange way, which is, this is actually the reason why it's called a zigzag connection. The final thing that we can notice is that the coils are facing in opposite directions. So you can see that this dot represents the direction of the coil. So you can see that these three coils are pointing in that direction, and these three are pointing in the other direction, which is going to be important later on. So how does this work, right? Well, let's just take a look at one phase, right? keep it simple, we're just going to look at one phase uh, and see what the voltage on that phase is. So the voltage on this phase, the voltage on R, is the voltage on this coil plus the voltage on this coil, right? because these coils are connected in series, as you can see. It's just like connecting two batteries in series, right? You know, if I take a battery, you know, and that's uh, 12 volts, if I then take you know, another battery, I connect it in series, you know, another 12 volts, I get 24 volts at the output, right? That's simple. Same thing is going to happen here. So I get one coil plus another coil, I add them up. Except it's not going to be as easy as adding up two numbers because of course these voltages are vectors, right? Just like the vectors that we saw here. Just like we added up this one and that one, we had to do this like kind of construction thingy going on. That's going to happen here as well. So the voltage on this coil is 139 volts, right? That's going to be the voltage on one of these coils. So, and that's going to be the same for all of these because they're all the same coils. So we're going to have 139 volts. So let's just draw that. Okay, so we're going to have a vector. Okay, and the length of that vector is um, one, three, nine. That vector represents this coil. And then we also have this coil. Now this coil is a bit weird because it's on a different leg of that transformer. Okay, so it's actually 120 plus 120, 240 degrees out of phase with this one. So we're going to go round the clock and it's going to go like this. So it's going to have the same length, right, 139, same size, but it's going to be 240 degrees off because it's on that final leg. Just like with the star connection, T is, a, is 240 degrees off compared to R, right? Same story there, but here's the thing, right? We forgot about one thing. This coil isn't pointing in the same direction as these. Right, this one is pointing backwards. So, actually this is not going to be the right vector. The right vector is actually the opposite of this. So it's actually this, right? That is the vector that represents this coil. So now we've got vector one for this coil, vector two for this coil, and now we can add them up, right? Now we can do this, except with vectors. So we add these up again, you know, same story as with these vectors, what we did there. We add these up and we get a new vector. And this new vector, right, you might have guessed it at this point, has a voltage of 240 volts. So we've now established that this works, or well, you know, it gives the same output as the star connected transformer. So now finally, the question is, why do you use this, right? What on earth uh, makes you use this with all this complicated stuff when you can also use that, right? Why do you do that? Well, it has to do with load balancing. So in order to understand that, let's take a very extreme example. Okay, let's say we have a situation with um, maximum load on R, okay? Um, so put a dot next to R, maximum load on S as well, I'm going to put a dot next to that as well, and nothing on T. Right? So for, for, for some reason, no one is using this phase. Now, of course, in the real world, it's not going to happen, but, you know, again, 
extreme example. So what that means is we have 50% of the load on R and 50% of the load on S and 0% on T. And on our transformer, that is exactly the same, right? This, this leg of the transformer is used to the max and so is this one and this one is unused. With this type of transformer, it's going to be a bit different. So first of all, I have maximum load on R, right? So I have maximum load on this coil, but also on this one. So I'm just going to put a circle around it, right? So I'm going to have current in that one, but also in this one. And we also had maximum load on S. So we're going to have a current in this one and current in this one. And we had nothing on T, so no current there and no current there. But what does this actually mean for the transformer? Well, it means we have 50% of our load on this leg, but we have 25% of the load on this one and another 25% on this one, right? So because of this weird arrangement of these coils, we've now put load on this leg of the transformer, even though we're not even using that phase. And in the process, we've removed some load from this leg of the transformer. So what this does is it kind of spreads out that load a bit better. So that's why you use a transformer like this. It's when you have absolutely terrible balance between your phases, you can use this to spread out the load a bit better. Now, most of the time, the balance isn't quite that terrible. And in that case, it's better to use this because this is a cheaper transformer to build. So if the balance is pretty acceptable, they tend to just use this, which is why this is a far more common type of transformer. Right, so now hopefully you know a little bit more about three-phase transformers and particularly about zigzag transformers, of course. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and, of course, thank you for watching.